Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Trigger Charge pre-market rundown for Friday, October 4th, 2019. We're going to go through a lot of things because we have some news that is happening today that is moving markets, and it's important to consider what's happening, why it's happening, and where markets can be going. You can always ask me any questions that you want in the chat panel, and I'll just type in the word here, right there, and you can simply uh, tell me about what you want to talk about, maybe uh, ask me a question, or in fact, give me a stock that you want us to look into. What we do all the time, what we do on a regular basis is we talk about what's happening uh, that's moving markets right now, some of the things that are going to be happening into the future. We'll get to that in a second. I want to mention, as you see my screen, which you should be seeing right in front of you right now, there is an important disclosure we need to discuss, and we need to state that investing, of course, involves substantial risk. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results, and please consider this entire presentation for educational purposes only. And... Use your best judgment when investing. Well, let's get down to what's happening. Of course, on a weekly update, we have to say that the theme probably is best situated and say we could say that there's a bit of a change in the tune. We have, of course, the continual headline bombs that are, are messing with markets, but there's an underlying change in tune when it comes to the economy and what people are saying about the economy, whereas... Just a few weeks ago, everybody said, hey, don't worry about things. Everything's going to be just fine. We're in a manufacturing recession. And that really shouldn't spill over to any significant areas within the economy. Because, of course, we're not a manufacturing economy anymore in the U.S. And we're really not worried about the fact that the rest of the world is slowing down. It doesn't seem to be impacting us here at all. Our GDP is still well above the 2.2, 2.5 range at the time. And in fact, we saw that the services index, consumer confidence, factory orders, all the things that matter for a while were really pointing towards a continuation of what we've had over the last 6, 8, 12 months. Well, all of a sudden, here we are. And what we're seeing is that now that we saw the manufacturing information, the ISM manufacturing index slow down last week to a number that we haven't seen since 2009, and on top of that, we saw that there was a slowdown in the services, which is a really important linchpin in our economy. Markets sold off pretty dramatically. Now, yesterday, they got to a point that was probably to a level that people thought was oversold coming into an employment number where we saw today. We'll get to that in a second. But, but basically, there was an oversold situation that was occurring. I'm going to show that to you right now. We're going to move away from this particular chart. And let's see if I can find that. Do I have that on here? Uh, yeah, right here. So you notice, uh, and I think what's really important to look at, this is uh, the trigger charts key reversal indicator. We call it the KRI. The KRI basically looks at market sentiment utilizing just simply the SPY, the only symbol that you can use here on a daily basis. But that really is not what we're looking at because that's just what's kicking off this indication indicator calculation. What we're looking at here is a way to judge and to uh, take a, a real look at what's happening from market sentiment. And every time we got these areas that I would discuss as being buy points, they were pretty significant low areas in the market that ended up being pretty good buy points. And we just saw another one that came into our uh, framework and into our eyesight just a couple of days ago. Yesterday, it actually got down to uh, it didn't close there, but yesterday it was down to a negative five, which is a pretty significantly oversold condition with markets. And that did tell us that there was an opportunity to buy. In fact, we did see that reversal come off of those lows yesterday, pretty much a 2% reversal from top to bottom with most of the major indices. And with that, we found that there was a significant amount um, of, well, short squeezes going on, buyers stepping in. Pretty much on anything that we saw that ha yesterday, this really played out really well. And it is a very simple uh, uh, indicator. Again, all it does is you need to look at this maybe, I don't know, once, twice, three times a day. Just glance on it, see where we are. If we're seeing that, for example, in the area of, let's kind of look at this here. Kind of just put it, you know, if we're seeing that we see a consistent line below the zero we may be looking at a trend that's in the negative side we can see of course where it marks any oversold condition or any overbought or a hot condition and then look at that where that compares where the trend is and you can see hey 
Should I be looking at this as a possible buy point? Should I be looking at this as an area that I should be looking to maybe unload some of my long positions and maybe, maybe hedge some of my portfolio? Or is it an area that, you know what, maybe if I'm short, I may want to consider that this is getting out of control and we are seeing a bottoming process happen here. Maybe what I need to do is get out of those. So uh, this is very similar to, um, or this is really a, a, a signal for a psychological indicator that works really nicely. And it's cheap. It's over on the Trading App Store. You can check that out anytime over on uh, the Trading App Store from TradeStation. We are exclusively on TradeStation. Many of you, of course, are on there. So I will, let me see if I can give you this to you. If you haven't gone over there yet, there's a 10-day free trial on all of these. And I'll just give you this link right now. It should get you there. Okay, let's get back to where we were. Let's talk about some of the other things because there's some things happening. Let's get a check quickly where we are. Uh, markets are very volatile this morning after the employment number came out. We saw a 3.5% unemployment rate, 136,000 additions on to the employment, and that was good. Markets were vacillating between positive and negative. Start out pretty negative before the number came out on the heels of what else is going on around the world but is quickly moving around because there's a lot of headlines. That's what I said. Right now, it's very difficult, no matter how you trade. Forget about investing for a second. I'm talking about short-term trading, whether you're intraday scalp trading or swing trading. It's very difficult to discern where things are going to go because there is so much noise that is moving markets. Now, you want to say, well, that's not moving markets. This is not. Yes, it is. Every time we get some kind of either economic print or we see something from the president related to China, good or bad, a new tariff on, a tariff off, something that's happening in Iran, all of this is moving markets. And with that in mind, you need to be really on your toes if you are, in fact, trading short term. Now, what we do on this particular discussion, usually we look at the daily charts for education, but what we're seeing right now is that employment is looking good on the heels of a very bad manufacturing number, on the heels of a questionable ISM services index that came out yesterday. And what we have coming up in just about a week or so, week and a half, earnings season. Again, we're seeing a change of tune of a lot of analysts that are starting to downgrade the aspect of pricing and outlook. And we saw already companies like FedEx, Micron, and a few others come in that have been, per and Costco too, as a matter of fact, talking about tariffs and how they're impacting the, their particular profitability. This is a big issue that we need to keep a focus on right now. I did do a quick chart here. Uh, here is the ISM blended composite. This is 30% of the manufacturing index and 70% of the services index. And what this shows is that you could, you could really see it pretty easily. What this shows is that we are starting to trend from about uh, March, uh, I'll call it about March, April-ish of uh, 2018 down to where we are now. There has been a trend, generally speaking, that has been moving lower. Now, it's important to look at this because this is a big component of our uh, overall economy. and probably does show us that GDP is going to be going lower than 2% over the next several quarters. The other news that we have that if it's not enough with all the trade talk and all the other market moving items is this whole impeachment news is moving markets. You know, what I think we saw with the big sell off and then relief rally that we saw on Wednesday and Thursday was not so much only about the ISM indices and the concern about the markets in ter uh, with relation to the economy. I think there was a lot more to be played here in, in, in looking at who is the front runner on the Democratic ticket. Right now, we have really, it looks like at least there's three, right? We have Biden, we'll see what happens there. We have Elizabeth Warren, and we have Bernie Sanders. When Bernie Sanders went in the hospital and that announcement came up, and it looked like that Warren was moving up in the polls, you tie that to the impeachment hearings and the concern about Trump moving down in the polls, and all of a sudden the light bulb goes on putting this all together. Well, if Bernie Sanders is out because he has some kind of heart or, or some kind of cardiovascular issue that's going on here, the likely candidate is possibly going to be Elizabeth Warren. And in... The terms of the market, what the market is reading through is it would be pretty negative for markets. So right now what we have here is, I think, uh, a little bit of a concern about what happens if, and there's another player in the market right now, and that is, like I said, the whole impeachment hearing and what's going to happen there and possibly what's going to go on with the Democrats. Uh, the global slowdown is clearly affecting the U.S. We could see that 
It is not so much that we are totally immune anymore. The longer this tariff and, and trade war goes on, the longer that we see that there is the continuation of a slowdown around the rest of the world, even though pretty much every single Fed around the world is reducing rates, the more we're going to have a problem. I do believe that the markets are moving because of weak hands. And that's what we saw that last week. The weak hands were exiting the markets, those that were in the markets, just for a short period of time, looking to, uh, you know, get back in on any kind of dip. And that's what's moving this top line right here. I want you to take a look at the chart to the right for a second here and take a look at what we're seeing here. This is a small cap index uh, back to March. We could probably move this back a little bit further, but it gets a little bit choppy when we do that. Let's take a look at that. Let's just move my down arrows. Uh, I'm using, I don't want to go that far. There we go. Uh, I'm using TradeStation 10 right here for this. And I have a really big announcement for those of you. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. Stick around for a few minutes. I want to show you a brand new feature and something here. But I want to look at this because this was the end of 2019. The, the down, the, the lulls, the... The absolute bottom, the deer of where we were in 2018 on the small caps, that major ride that we saw, and these lines that we drew in some time ago connecting all of the different altimeter levels that were really significant. And we've noticed that when you get past there, we see these waterfalls happen, these beautiful numbers on the upside and downside. But right now, one thing that we identified and I talked about, and I'm going to show you another one in a second, was this about this 146 level. Uh, for the IWM and you'll notice uh, this is the small cap index for the ETF and you'll notice we pretty much got there and bounced right off this was a really good guide to look at where we're going to see that there is the opportunity to have this um, you know bottom out if it happened now if we do go down below there I got to tell you if we do somehow look to get below this level I'm going to kind of just draw something right here Th this is all back in play you know th this is all back in play if we if we break this 145 level we'll call it um, if you want to be really kind of exacting on this you probably have to go a little bit lower and say okay well about 144 and change but if you break there it's kind of all out war on the small caps right now we're trading at about 147 down from about 158 that we saw recently uh, next week we have CPI we have PPI we have import and export prices we're looking right here we have University of Michigan for October the other thing I want to mention to you also is you can ask about our four-hour online coaching program for anybody that actually uh, comes aboard and becomes one of the um, one of the people that are very happy with the indicator suite, a paying subscriber for the Commander Series. We will give you a four-hour online coaching program. Today we're going to be looking at these stocks. We got uh, SPY, QQQ, Schwab, Ameritrade dropping zero trade commissions down to zero. How happy is everybody about that? Trade commissions dropping to zero for stocks, ETFs, to a degree on options as well. I mean, hoorah, that's pretty good. Hurt those stocks dramatically. GoPro came out with earnings. We see Facebook, Heiko, a little short. I want to show you a setup and TLT. You ready to go with this? Uh, give me your uh, stocks if you have any to look at. We'll go right to those in a second. Let's pull this up. Let's take a look at where we are. Let's just uh, cut a little. Not moving. We got 57 up on the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Futures, the minis, we got six on the um, on the on the spoos, and we got on the Qs, we got 29 and change. All right, let's take a look at a few things. I want to look at the SPY here for a second. The SPY here, uh, this is, uh, let's look at the, the daily chart. We see that clearly, that we, let, let, actually, let's flip back to the 30-minute chart for a second. Let's take a look at this. This is kind of interesting. Um, let me bring down my annotation tools and do some some viewing of this here. So I want you to look at a few things. I want you to look at this really great short that happened. Uh, this was on approximately, let's kind of go and move this up a little bit here. There we go. Uh, this was uh, this, this short right here. We see that we a uh, short was called uh, overnight. Uh, then the next day came in. So you have a short going into the close. Markets opened up dramatically lower. You got the short right about 293. And then what we uh, had was a orange that came in 287 and now you have a short a long position brewing on the 30 minute chart kind of uh, coincides with what we're seeing here on the daily on the right side you saw this nice short entrance a few different you know questionable moves in or out of the market right there and that's what you have to deal with when you are looking at a market that really has no direction but the last call of a short got you back into into this you know very significant area 
of a short call. You'll be back at 293 before you move out. So the short was called at about 296 and change. And then here we are on a daily basis looking at this uh, right now. Um, coming back and see that little nub right there, right here, right there. So what's happening there is we're getting a new altimeter that is forming. The Qs, let's kind of look at this, the Qs. We drew this uh, sometime in the future. We said we're pretty safe above this 187 level, but now when I look at this right here, this is really your support. Um, and we did, in fact, I'm going to pull this line down a little bit, get to the all-time uh, the, 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 the um, high volume node right here, point of control. And that really showed us that there was a nice bounce opportunity, and that did connect a little bit. Uh, you can see some connections on the left-hand side and some consolidation there, so we did see that pretty well. One of the things I want to show you is up here. For those of you that have Autopilot MTF, we're going to take a look up here. I want to show you something. If I And there is a tutorial on this. If you take a look at the editing the, the areas in this, uh, let me bring out my little handy-dandy little thing. We have uh, new things that say alert on alert on alert on see all these alerts you can now individually alert either a stock and an its entire um time frame that you have on your radar screen or you can actually pr do it for all stocks or you could do it for maybe just a group of stocks so right now what's happening is you can actually go in here and you could type in something like true in here so true, uh, uh, you can see the alert on one, the 30 minute is now going to be true. And that will actually come in and alert you throughout the day. Let's see if we get anything. Uh, right now it's not happening because I probably have to control A, control R. Let's see. That'll take a second to come up. Uh, and when it does, it's taking more than a second it looks like. It's starting to, it's starting to calculate here. Uh, you'll get these alerts that pop in. So you can check out our... Tutorial section over at TriggerCharts.com or also on YouTube. There's a brand new, there's a brand new video on exactly how this works. This is really powerful because now you don't have to worry about looking at all the alerts that come out. They'll come out on a regular basis, refresh throughout the day, bar by bar, give you an alert only on a per bar basis. And basically, like I said, it then allows you to look at a lot more stocks and have much more power and trading abilities for all this. So, I didn't probably turn that on, right? Oh, I don't have alerts on, that's why. You have to actually turn alerts on besides that. Uh, let's look at Schwab. This is miserable. Up a little bit today, Schwab cascaded down. There was a couple different times that commissions were broken. This is not a stock that looks like it's really investable unless you really want to uh, you know, think that long-term they're going to be okay. They're well below, look at this, this is below you know, the 2017 levels. Obviously, they're also hurt by interest rate markets. Ameritrade is looking the same. You know, look at this drop, 23%. This is interesting. Is there a trade opportunity here? I mean, possibly, but there's nothing on the charts that really shows it. Um, I bought a few shares just for having it in my account. I like this company. Uh, it is not something that I would really look at and give you any kind of direction other than the, the good news. Look at this. How great is this? This short was was called, was 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 given to you Right there, $47. Look at this unbelievable range that you had right here on a daily. If you were just following along, you got some long alerts here at 44. You got out at 50. You got nothing going on because you were in a consolidation mode. You got to call it 47 and change, and you bought it back. Well, not yet. We don't have a new altimeter that formed yet. So this is right now. I mean, you could, could buy this back, but we're still in a condition that looks like it's a short. GoPro, what a miserable stock. I think I'm going along with misery here uh, here today. But you look at this stock, we look longer term. You can see that this has been a continual short that has been called upon by the autopilot. Every time we get a short, this one didn't work out so well, but this one did. You got out down here. You got some nothing going on. One quick long position here. And you got a short that was called yesterday. Um, I don't like the positioning right now. I think that you are... Uh, pretty much done. I don't know if I would get into a stock that was a $4 stock for a short, but I thought it was pretty interesting to show you how the daily autopilot called these shorts really nicely and moved you in and out of the positioning. And what's nice is about this is that when you look for the orange, here's our orange, um, here's an orange, here's an orange. Those are areas that got you out of a short position. 
These are areas that got you out of your long position. So some people say, well, where's my sell stop? You don't need a sell stop because we have profit zones that are built into all of this. So when you look at the Commander Series, what we're really looking at is a very easy way to visualize what's happening. Facebook's kind of interesting. Facebook has been a really interesting long position for a while. You can look at any of these positions here that show us, well, we got a long position that, that vaulted off of the 170, really didn't get you out to about 195. Got another long positioning at 197, and then you look right here, got you out at 202. Then what do you get? Then you got short, short positioning. You got a short call there. It got you out at, let's see, it was about mm, 199. And then about 182 and change, it got you out. And then it started to move in a rant, kind of a, a messy movement up and down. Again, a small area that had some uh, left, that uh, to the left that was a little bit congested, but not much, not really anything very significant. Uh, from there, what happened is you got this bouncy, bouncy ball. You got some kind of short, long, long and short. And then you got a short call here, back at 179, pulled you out at about 174 and change. So Facebook, where are we now on Facebook? Anybody have any thoughts on this for me? Where would you go on Facebook if you're looking at primarily right now the daily interval? Where is the best side of the market or the bias? You can type it into here. Everybody should be up and awake. Hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully I'm not just talking in midair here. So let's take a look. Um, let me get into, let me not look at the chat. Let me think of, let me look at this chart. Let me think what I'm thinking about this. Okay, I got it. All right, what do we have from people? So the question is, are we, are we going to go short or are we going to go long or stay out of this trade entirely? Right now, currently trading, let's, let's bring this up a little bit more. And click in here. A little bit less. So what I see here. In this, yeah, a lot of people mixed, mixed, mixed opinions from the group, <laughs> but when I uh, mostly on the short side, and that's right. So what I see here is a couple of downstrokes here. You know, clearly some. I kind of look at different points. I see my trends that are not breaking up, and I don't see anything all the way back to August that shows me it should be in an uptrend here. Let's look a little bit further back. L further back, what we saw clearly was a level that was in an uptrend here. Moving back and uptrend here. So now, let me clear these because a mess. Uh, right now, what we have here, well, we have probably what I would pretty much consider when we look back even a little bit further on this chart is the potential for a head and shoulders pattern. And you'd have to then do some calculations on where that would break down to. And you may look at this and say, well, maybe if you take the head to the neck and double that down, you know, you have your 160 range probably, just a rough... Rough discussion here. But it does look like that we're in a short area right here. The thing that I would be worried about and, and, and where you'd really need to go, I, I would short back up into this. So back up into, let's see. If we can get up to about 182, 184, right in this region right here, that's where I would look to get short again. Right now trading at about 179.77. I would really like to see it test its... its um, it's a high volume node or, or um, you know, just get in between this consolidation, not able to get any higher than its uh, level right here. And then what I would do, do there is say that probably enter into a short as I'm not seeing the momentum turn around if, in fact, that is the case. I'm going to put on here also my aileron. And you can see from the aileron on the bottom, the momentum has clearly been down to the sell side of things. So, yeah, I think I agree with you uh, for the most part. It's there. This is a chart. Check it, take a look at this one. H-E-I, Heiko. Let's look at the daily right here. And what do you think about this? Is this a short or long or no touch? This is going back to May now. And, and by the way, um, now you can see the aileron on the bottom here uh, combined with the altimeter something interesting in the altimeter so is this a short or a long that's the question i'm asking you right now short or long okay we got some in hey people are we awake this is a two-way discussion i got like one or two people coming back with answers here we got a lot of people online is this particular thing heiko right here i'm gonna make it really big on your page Really big. Okay, is that a short or a long right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So that's a good thing that somebody mentioned, the bias on the top. So what I want to look show you here is that on Heiko, we have a short on the right here, right on the top here. Let's like focus in on the top. We have a short on the weekly. We have a short on the daily. We have a short on the, on the 240. We have some long positions turning here. Always respect the longer term, and we have a lot of longer term that's happening. What this looks like to me, if I was to close my eyes and only look at the radar screen, what I would see is that this is an overall short position that is showing a contra trade on a short-term basis, but the longer-term bias is short. Now, when I look at the chart, let's look at this chart a little bit more closely. What do I see here? Oh, there's something delicious that I see. I see a magnificent hole down to about 107 on Heiko. There is nothing in this area. I don't see a darn thing inside here at all. There's nothing. It's all black that I'm coloring in right now. And what I find is that there's some good support in this range, but really, the support really is right about here, the $100 range. Now, let's take a look at something else that's really interesting. It's something you don't see that often. I talk about because when I see it, I find it really interesting. If I was to look at this particular radar screen, if I was to just simply look at where we are, uh, not the radar screen, this is this is um, not the radar, the uh, altimeter, what we find is one red and one blue. Here we have green, blue, or cyan, and red. Green, cyan, red, green, cyan. Where is it here? It's stuck underneath. When I hover this, click my left button on trade station, I see that the, see the cruise and the stall on the bottom there? The bottom numbers, 125.81, 125.81. That means that my high volume node, my point of control, is at the same level as my unfair low or my support. Support turns to resistance. Resistance turns to support. What we have here now is the fact that there is actually a level of uh, one, we'll call it 125, that since we are on this hole, that it really needs to get above. Let's call it 125.80 right there, 92. Um, 125.81. We, if, if we start looking at this and continue on to short, if it gets back up to this line right here, I would look to short again and reshort it. This is my, now this uh, full uh, disclosure, we own a short position on there as of the last couple of days. Um, I see also on the bottom of this, there is a continuation of the move on the downside or a trend that is down, something is very important. So when I look at this in total and I find that, wow, look at this, all the way in this region, all the way up here because of this gap and because of where we are now, there is nothing to really stand the way of this thing cascading lower. Remember, what we're looking for is vertical fast moves over time. That it's really important here. So with that, I think that's really a good lesson, this Heiko. If you could pull this up on your charts, if you're using the Commander Series, you're using um, whether it's the, the full kit, uh, where we actually will give you also, remember, you get radar. Oh, wow, what's going on here? Let's click this. This is what it will look like. I'll take off aileron. If you see here, you see there's a, a big P here. This is a B. It did cascade down below that. And then now what we have is another area right here that's looking very vulnerable for this stock. So there you go. You get a 10-day free trial of any of the indicators over on TradeStation. Some great tutorials over on TriggerCharts.com. You got the links. I'm going to give it to you again for the 10-day free trial on any of the things, whether it's the KRI indicator, the Commander Series, or separately the Altimeter, or the Aileron, which is very very powerful to help you identify the strength direction of trends. So check all those out, and uh, we will be here again next Friday. Thanks for joining me. Boy, the group, groups are getting bigger and bigger, but uh, it seems that a lot of people are, are sitting back watching, not really commenting. Bring your questions, your stocks, your ideas next week, Friday at 9 o'clock. Tell your friends. I want to thank you for joining me, and uh, I'll see you again next week. Market about to open. Let's take a look where we are here. Eh, still in the same place. Uh, now up about 70 points on the open. It looks like it's going to happen. And there goes the market's open any second now. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week. <laughs>